South Africa walked away with um, $8.5 billion in financing at the recent COP26 summit as part of efforts to accelerate the country's transition away from coal power and push in the blow for workers who may be affected by the shift. And considering that South Africa relies overwhelmingly on coal and that the country has pledged mm -hmm. to reduce its overall carbon emissions, it now faces enormous obstacles in doing so. I was hoping we could start off with you just talking to me um, on what some of these obstacles are and how exactly they could possibly avoided, uh, be avoided or even mitigated. That's a great question, Simone. I mean, uh, I would probably start by saying that uh, many people have estimated that a climate change projects, or I would say climate change amelioration or improvement projects will run into billions, even trillions of dollars. That is the sort of scale that this will operate on, simply because these are not just infrastructure building projects. They tend to be social, political, technical, economic projects. We are talking about community engagements. We are talking about very, very large infrastructure like wind farms or dams or water treatment plants and soil protection and reforestation, you know, fairly complex and technical projects in themselves, but also a variety of people being affected, a variety of industries being affected as well. So there is inherent complexity and inherent scale in these projects to begin with. Now the reason it's important to look very closely at these projects is our own research has found that a lot of the project success for large complex projects tends to be determined at the setup stage. So we talk about the concept called front loading, where you front load, you put in place conditions such as resourcing, such as risk mitigation plans, such as capable tools and technologies from AI to analytics to basic project management tools right at the start. And if you take the effort to do that, and in complex climate projects, you will be dealing with people from different countries, there will be cultural nuances. If you take care of that at the start, then the probability is high that the project will succeed. So that's number one. Of necessity, these projects are long-term projects, one year, two year, three years. And it is hard to predict for the best placed forecasters what will happen over a period of three years. So project agility, organizational agility needs to be built in into these projects. And then you talk about specific adaptability skills or complex problem solving skills, choosing your ways of working depending upon what is unfolding in your project, that needs to be built in too. So you need two things at a minimum. You need a front loading um, set of conditions which set you up for success, but you also need to build an enterprise agility during the course of the project, which lets you adapt and react quickly should things not go as planned. We sort of briefly touched on some of this, but you know, obviously some of the obstacles are likely to be political with some of the rest coming from how the country chooses to deliver these climate projects. Um, it was also mentioned that if Madupi and Kusile are a benchmark, then clearly project management skills will be in demand over the next decade. Could you give me some insight into how project or why project management skills rather are so critical to reach um, South Africa's climate change um, objectives? And then obviously, um, I don't know if there's anything that you would want to add on how project management can assist in bypassing these, these obstacles or alleviating them completely. You did briefly touch on some of these, these aspects, but I don't know if there's anything that you'd want to add. Maybe we start at the back end of that question, Simone. And one of the critical elements in project management is stakeholder communications uh, and sponsor commitment. And these issues are increasingly in focus simply because to get anything large accomplished these days, you have to talk to multiple organizations, individuals, governments, regulators, funding bodies, uh, your own project teams, your suppliers, your customers, local communities, you know, I could go on and on. So just that particular element is vital to uh, have these projects succeed. Uh, I think the other thing is what we call the rise of the project economy in the wake of some of the big changes that we've seen and continue to see the pandemic is just one of them. But even pre-pandemic, we were talking about mega trends like artificial intelligence or the rise of artificial intelligence, the changing demographics globally. Uh, Africa is a case in point uh, with one of the largest young populations on the planet. Um, the civic um, individual discontent at the moment that seems to be fairly global and 
and so on. And these large changes mean that the nature of work itself must change when you cannot be with your teams, when you must work remotely or in a hybrid model. You need that much more of a sharper focus on the one hand on outcomes. So you need to be able to make sure that you're really focused on, on creating impact. And on the other hand, you also at the same time need to be focused on people because there is a tendency when you're working remotely to be very transactional and to forget that it's people at the end of the day that make the difference. So we like to talk about the physical infrastructure and the psychological infrastructure of projects and both are, are critical. We would argue that the psychological infrastructure, which you know we also refer to as the notion of power skills or soft skills or relational skills that people have is going to be vital. And I'll end by saying that our research on project management oriented employment has found that globally, the world is likely to need something like 25 million new project managers over the next 10 years. That's an average of two and a half million project managers every year. And in fact, the same research shows that South Africa, in South Africa, project management oriented employment will grow at one of the fastest rates in the world. And we look at some of the projects that are already getting off the blocks, like, like the Waterberg project or the student housing uh, beds project. Uh, just the fact that in Africa overall, we estimate that something like 75 million new homes will need to be built in Africa overall over the next several years. And you know, then we have to think about all the other infrastructure. All these are big projects that you need to commit to an outcome in a finite amount of time at a finite amount of cost. And then obviously you can't do that without managing risk and uh, keeping the stakeholders informed. So these are classical project management disciplines. And that is why we feel that this very grounded and very basic ability to get things done, which is what project management is, on time, on cost, to spec, is going to be vitally important as South Africa builds out its infrastructure. Yes, there will be challenges. There will be political challenges. There will also be sheer technical challenges. There will be social challenges as well. But the project management toolkit provides a systematic uh, framework, if you will, to address these problems. And then recognizing that some of these problems are complex in nature. They are, they are system-wide um, uh, system problems. So that if you try to solve the problem in one part, uh, something else stands up in another part. We are also deploying complex problem solving tools um, that we've introduced recently, which enable on top of a project management framework, a much more systematic, much more collaborative approach to problem solving. And we are finding that to resonate very, very strongly in the world at the moment. PMI's talent gap report predicts that 25 million new um, professionals will be required, meaning that about two and a half million uh, managers will need to fill the project uh, management um, roles every year to keep up with the demand. We sort of briefly touched on this and obviously how far South Africa is expected to grow, but generally is the world up to this task? I mean, are we able to actually meet these, these goals and expectations? And obviously more specifically, is South Africa able to meet these? We, we think this will be a big challenge, but not impossible by any means. Um, if you think about uh, learning technologies and learning methodologies and how far they have come, um, Simone, in recent years, uh, you know, online learning is obviously much bigger now, two years into the pandemic than it used to be. We see the rise of micro-credentials and PMI itself um, has launched uh, micro-credentials as well, such as in organizational transformation. We've introduced specific um, vertical or industry-oriented credentials like for construction management. Despite that, um, putting out two, two and a half million project managers globally is, is, is not a small task. Uh, but we think uh, one can make a significant impact by starting early. So one needs to start at the university level. And we have certification and training offerings for people at that level so that they enter the workforce already speaking the language of project management. And then, of course, we have the more classical and more rigorous uh, certifications and trainings for you know project management professionals as well. We also feel that the nature of work in the modern organization requires everybody to speak the language of project management. We call them accidental project managers. So you uh, don't have to have the word project in your title to be doing project work or to require project management skills. You could be in the accounts department or the HR or the procurement or the sales department. You still need to get a finite piece of work done in a finite amount of time, in a finite amount of cost. And to address uh, this segment, accidental project managers and 
they are typically 10 or you know 100 times the number of uh, the core project managers in the organization. We have tools like Kickoff, which is really a 45 minute free of charge, simple application available on our website. You can take that and you will very quickly get the basics of uh, classical project management, of agility and so on. And we think it's a combination of these flexible and diverse uh, methodologies that will aid the speed with which the whole PM capability develops in South Africa and indeed globally.